I think we're so wasting our let time. me move on then. Uh, I okay. think we cover that. So since Jesus said the Father is the only true God in John 17, 3, then if that is so, what kind of God is Jesus? A false God? Some other kind of God? Or did he not really mean only when he said only in John 17, 3? Oh, no, he meant only because there's only one true God. Uh, again, here's where we, here again is where we have to read uh, more than one sentence at a time. Uh, because not only has he referred to his Father, and, and again, I, I view Jesus Christ here as the God-man. That's what John describes him as in the sense of the Logos has become flesh. Uh, he is praying to his Father. He's differentiating himself from the Father. Uh, he was not a polytheist, and so he believed there was only one true God. And he said, this is true and eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you have sent, Jesus Christ. And so to know eternal life is to have a joint object, the Father and the Son. And right after this, well, somebody even punctuated as right one now. sentence. He says, glorify me together with self, Father, the glory which we had before the world so was. So is the Father the only true God? For Jesus Christ, certainly. For you? In the sense that Jesus meant these words, yes. And so the Father is the only true God? In the sense that Jesus meant it. And what sense is that? Well, as I just explained, there is only one true God. There right. cannot be more than one true God. And that's the Father. And that is why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, uh, the word for uh, service and worship in the temple is used of both the Father and the Son, a singular pronoun referring to both of them uh, because of the close relationship that exists between them. So, Well, that's an assumption that it refers to both of them collectively and not one individually. The point is, though, is Jesus, the, is Jesus correct that the Father is the only true God? We all know what only true God means. Is he correct in when he said that the Father was the only true God? You, I've already answered this question. Is there a point that you want to it make? Seems I already, like you said I, I would, yes, it, it's and then like you I would said never, no. I would never say that Jesus was wrong in a statement. So obviously, it's what we understand that to mean. Jesus, as the incarnate Word, would never refer to false gods as a true God. The right. question is: It seems that you, you're engaging in category error to say that if Jesus, the Father, is the only true God, then Jesus, who is glorified with Him, cannot be identified by someone else as the true God, as Thomas did when he bowed before him and said, my Lord and my God. Well, but that's the question. If the Father is the only true God, then what kind of God is Jesus? Again, you assume a differentiation, not only in the fact that the nature of God cannot be shared between two divine persons, the repeated assumption of Unitarianism, uh, but also it's again a category error that you are different, you are not differentiating between person and being. I assume there's one category of true God, and I assume there's one person in that category, the Father. That's what Jesus said. Do you agree with it? No, because you just assumed oh. Unitarianism. You don't agree with it. No, yes. you just, you, no, I don't agree with your second statement, which was you assume there is only one person in the category. That's How many where your error comes in. Did Jesus in. assume in his statement? Well, obviously, since he goes on to talk about being glorified with his Father before the world was, uh, that would not that's a different delimit. Statement. Well, it's, it's within the same paragraph. That's, I, that's again, the, the difference between us and exegesis. The category we're talking about is the category of true God. How many persons did Jesus place in the category of the true God? Well, again, you are assuming that when Jesus says you are the true God, that he was a Unitarian. And I say to you, in light of verse 5, which I allow, I, allow, I, I like to read entire paragraphs. Thing. I'm sorry? I, I'm not assuming any such thing. I'm just assuming that Jesus was meant what he said. And did he also mean that, uh, that he was to be glorified with the Father with the glory which he had before, with him before the world was? Absolutely, but that's... Okay. Uh, I'm sorry? You're asking the questions. Not yeah. Me. Well, he, had, he got me back on that one. <laughs> but, uh, Let's follow you. Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm still not quite clear. We have a fairly <clears throat> simple statement made by Jesus. The Father is the only true God. We have a category, true God. We have a member, Father. Are there any other members to the category of true God according to Jesus' statement in John 17, 3? No, in John 17, 5. Are there any other members in the category of the true God other than the Father according to Jesus in John 17, 3? Well, uh, if, you, if you want to only we'll look at verse 3. Right that. No. So in, in, in verse 5, it says, what about the true God and who being a part of it? It says he exists alongside him. The angels exist alongside him according to Job 38, 7. Mm -hmm. Existence is different from being classified as a particular type of being. Mm-hmm. So I have no problem with Jesus existing alongside the only true God. My question is, who is identified as the only true God according to Jesus in John 17, 3? Well, we've already answered that question, and my point in going to 17, 5 was that for any creature to pray the words of John 17, 5 again means 
that we have no idea who God is. We have no idea how to worship. That's not my question. My question is about you're just making a statement. I'm just trying to respond to it. You're making a, a, you're making an argument about a different point. My point is that in John 17, 3, we're talking about the true, the only true God, monotheism. Yes. Who's identified as the only true God? The Father. And no was, one else. Excuse me, are, are you, is that a question? It sounds I'm, like you're I'm making a statement. I'm prefacing my question that I've asked several times. If the Father is the one identified as the only true God, <clears throat> and that's monotheism, on what basis do you change the categorization of the Father is the only true God by Jesus. Because I do not read into Jesus' words the implicit Unitarianism that you read into everything that he says. In light of I what he himself it. says in verse 5, and, in, and due to the fact that, as I believe we've pointed out, you have as a presupposition the fact that Jesus, or that no incarnation could ever take place. How would the incarnate one address God? Would he be an atheist? He can address God all day long, but to call him the only true God, Why? when the Holy Spirit's not quite incarnate, is it? No. Now that one I hold against you. <laughs> the point is that even Jesus in an incarnate state can tell the truth. And if the Father's not the only Excuse true me. God. Those are statements, not God questions. This is a preface to my, part of my question. If Jesus can tell the truth as an incarnate person, then he can certainly say that the true God is more than one person. He didn't. Do you accept his statement or not? Uh, I do not accept your statement that he didn't. How about his statement that the Father is the only true God? Uh, Mr. Stafford, we're spinning wheels here. I have automatically, I have said from the beginning, That's I believe what Jesus said, I do not accept your disassembling of the text. I'm just quoting it. Uh, well, but you're not quoting all of it. What part am I missing? Well, you seem to forget that verse 5. That's a good idea. Okay. Well, we're getting the same result with each question. What is?